elevated risks of severe weather, our weather experts are tracking the storms. Why your blood donations are in dire need and how each one has an impact on the community. And we're remembering the lives lost in Nashville earlier this week. This is OU Nightly. Thanks for watching OU Nightly. I'm Olivia Daig. And I'm Dakota McDowell Wapakichi. We begin tonight with a serious situation here weather wise. Right now, Norman in the middle of a fire weather watch. And our weather team is watching the risk of severe weather tomorrow. That's why meteorologist Lauren Brand joins us right now. Lauren, there's a lot to talk about. Yeah, there is. We are in a fire weather watch currently. Um, but like I was mentioning to you guys earlier, we are going to have some temperature rises as well. And we know with those swinging temperatures, there's also a risk for severe weather. Yes, there is, Olivia. There, are, there is going to be a risk of some severe weather here on Thursday and Friday. But taking a look at some of these current temperatures right now, we are sitting in the mid-60s right now, um, Norman. Um, just a little bit warmer up here in Guymon. They are definitely uh, have just a little bit warmer temperature up there. But like I said earlier, we are going to be seeing a potential for some severe weather here on Thursday. Now, Oklahoma City and the Metro and a majority of the state is included in this with Norman as well. So make sure you're staying weather aware with that. But as we get into Friday, this is going to shift eastward. And that is when we're going to see Tulsa, Muskogee, McAllister, Miami, and Idaho are all going to be affected by this on Friday. Now coming up in Maine weather, I'm going to continue to talk about some of those storms that are moving in. We are going to be heating up in some of our temperatures and some of those windy conditions coming up next. Nashville and the rest of the country are mourning more young lives lost to gun violence this week. CNN's Mike Valerio is in Nashville as the investigation continues. We want you to know that this video can be graphic for some viewers. I know as sure as I'm sitting here that Catherine went down protecting those kids. Her friend Catherine Kuntz was head of Covenant Elementary School, one of six lives lost in Monday's horrific shooting, remembered alongside Mike Hill, the school's beloved custodian, Big Mike to all the kids, and three nine-year-old students. Evelyn Dickhouse, her family shattered, her pastor honoring her on Wednesday. She's amazing, uh, shining light. Howie Scruggs, her father, the pastor of the church that runs the school, and their classmate, William Kinney. Substitute teacher Cynthia Peak, who was filling in at Covenant on Monday. She and Catherine Kuntz were both good friends of the wife of Tennessee's governor, Bill Lee. Cindy and Maria and Catherine Kuntz were all teachers at the same school and have been family friends for decades. We will act to prevent this from happening again. Move. The fast actions of officers who charged in to stop the threat 14 minutes after the first 911 call are being widely praised. There's no standing around the hallway talking about it, asking for extra equipment or more people. We could have been talking about more tragedy uh, than what we are. We had six innocent, beautiful lives that were taken, and we had officers that went in harm's way to stop this. Those who knew the victim, victims at Nashville's Covenant Elementary School are remembering them as shining lights in the community. And our hearts go out to the families affected by the shooting. And in the case of there being an active shooter here at OU, law enforcement wants students to know that they're ensuring safety is the first priority. I, I, I can assure every student that's watching this to be assured that if there is an active shooter scenario on the campus of Oklahoma University, that we are coming. And we're coming loud, and we're coming very quickly. OU Campus Safety has active shooter guidelines up on its website with more details on how to run, hide, and fight. The Oklahoma Blood Institute is in need of a certain blood type. OU Knightley's Morgan Martin is live on campus with more on how students can help. Morgan? There's been an ongoing blood shortage for months, and while the Oklahoma Blood Institute says it's in better shape, it's not in the clear yet. Officials are asking for everyone's help. O negative donors to come out. If anybody's O negative, please come out and donate. The more the merrier. That's the mentality the Oklahoma Blood Institute has for donations. 
The OBI is looking for help from the OU campus to fill donor chairs to avoid an emergency shortage. David Crawford with the Oklahoma Blood Institute says that universal O negative blood is something they always need. You can't just receive any blood type. If you're in the hospital or if you're in a, a critical situation and you need to receive blood, you can receive O negative. That's why it is uh, so important to have a good supply of O negative, a good inventory on hand. And right now we are a little bit low in that area, so we need to get some O negative donors out. With OBI, you're donating directly to local area hospitals and you don't need a specific reason. Students like Sydney Lewis donate for the sake of community. I feel like it's really important since we live in this community to give back because we have to look after each other and it's such an easy thing to do. Um, like it's free. You can book an appointment at OBI.org or just walk right in at any location through Friday. Students can come to the Couch Center Storm Shelter tonight through 7 p.m. to help out. And if you can't make it this week, OBI returns to campus regularly. Reporting live from campus, Morgan Martin, OU Nightly. Thanks, Morgan. Today, a life-saving drug is becoming easier for people to get a hold of. Pepper Papura has that and the rest of today's international headlines from the News Center. Pepper. Olivia, Dakota, the nose spray used to save people overdosing on opioids is now available over the counter. The drug Narcan will be sold in places like drugstores, convenience stores, grocers, gas stations, and online. Its manufacturer says the spray is safe to use on anyone suspected of overdosing, including children and babies. And if it's given to someone by mistake, they won't be harmed. 86-year-old Pope Francis is hospitalized with a respiratory infection. The Pope was spotted earlier today outside the Vatican and appeared to be in good health. But a spokesman says he was complaining about some breathing issues and decided to go to the Gemelli Hospital. He says the condition is not related to COVID-19. The Pope will stay in the hospital for a few days to recover. The CEO of Starbucks was questioned by the Senate after being accused of union busting. Employees say the company is violating labor laws at some of its stores, including one here in Oklahoma City. Have you ever threatened, coerced, or intimidated a worker for supporting a union? I've had conversations that could have been interpreted in a different way than I intended. And instead of meeting today as planned, the grand jury deciding if former President Donald Trump paid hush money to an adult film star won't meet again for another month. Livia, Dakota. Thank you, Pepper. The swords, fair food, and vendors are back out by Reeves Park. But what does the annual medieval fair bring to Norman? OU Nightly's David Ash is live from Reeves Park with more. David. I'm here at Reeves Park where the annual a medieval fair is set up and ready to go. Tents are pitched, the kitchens are preparing, and the medieval festival is set to go here in just a few days. The medieval fair is coming back to Norman, and amongst all the ongoing preparation, excitement is building for clothing vendor Savvy Miller. Well, we're Fiona's Fineries. We're a clothing and uh, leather company. We absolutely love coming out here every year. Um, dress people up, make them feel pretty. Everybody gets smiles on their faces. That's what we're always here for. For Savvy and her team of four, the event is well worth the travel from their home in Ohio. We absolutely love to see people come out, bring their family, bring everybody, and have a really good time between the food and the vendors and check out local artists, stuff like that. We come all the way out from Ohio just to show off the handmade clothing and leather that we do. Norman Mayor Larry Heikola says the fair is a great opportunity to draw in visitors from around the state. It's a neat thing to have people come to Norman just to have fun. They, they don't have to do anything else. They come down there, they park, they eat those big old turkey legs and, and do the things that they want to do and just have a good time. The fair begins on Friday at 10 a.m. and will finish up Sunday evening at 7 p.m. Reporting live from Reeves Park, David Ash, OU Nightly. Thank you, David. A devastating tornado ripped through Mississippi, spewing debris everywhere. When we come back, a Unitely meteorologist Eli Millard gives us the science behind the storm. And now looking at our campus cam, we see some sunny skies. Later, our meteorologist Lauren Brand will tell us what when that could change. OU Nightly comes back in a little bit. The 
the tornado that touched down in Mississippi last week threw debris as far as 100 miles away. Oh, nightly weather expert Eli Millard explains how winds ramped up to 170 miles per hour in today's Earth Report. It has been five days since the deadly tornado outbreak ripped through the deep south. The most damaging of them tore through the communities of Rolling Fork and Silver City. The latest death toll remains at 26. The National Weather Service released a preliminary rating of the tornado, calling it an EF4. So let's examine how this tornado developed on radar. So we did have a strong line of storms develop through northeast Louisiana and in to Mississippi. But we're going to focus on this cell right here going through Rolling Fork. So we're looking at reflectivity here. This basically shows this is what you see basically on TV showing you your rain and stuff. And this is a heavy precipitation cell, so it doesn't really look like a tornadic super health cell that has that strong hook. But as we go and we zoom in, you can see that rotation is pretty strong. We've got a reflectivity drop right here. You can see it wrapping around right there. And you can see it on our product that we call Velocity, which uh, shows wind speed and direction. Green means the, the uh, wind is going towards the radar and red means the wind is going away from the radar. So when you have a couplet right here is what we call it, an area of green and red next to each other, you can see it's spinning uh, counterclockwise. And we also have a product called uh, correlation coefficient, which is what we use to de detect uh, debris. So you can see as the tornado rolls into rolling fork, we actually have a correlation coefficient drop as it goes in to rolling fork. And what that means is the radar is detecting uh, areas that uh, so like we're looking at rain here, so that is stuff that is very close in size. And then here in Rolling Fork, since it is debris, it's much more varying in size. And as that goes off towards the northeast, that debris is being lofted into the air and hitting that low level jet. And then it is scattering to the north of the tornado. That's 30 to 40,000 feet into the air. So that is what this tornado looked like on radar. Dakota, Olivia, back to you. Thanks, Eli. If you've ever wanted to learn a new language, OU's diverse community is coming together to celebrate culture and language. Find out more about the event after the break. Well, first it was cold and now things are starting to warm back up again. Yeah, a real roller coaster, but what can you expect here in Oklahoma? Lauren, what are our temperatures going to look like going into the evening? Yeah, guys, we are having some warmer temperatures. and Right now we see some clear blue skies. I'm going to have more on weather coming up next. Well, good afternoon and welcome back to OU Nightly. Right now we're taking a live look across campus. We've had some clear blue skies today and temperatures have been pretty lovely. We've been sitting in the mid 60s. Right now we are sitting at around 66 degrees. Uh, like I said earlier, we're having some clear blue skies right now. Winds are a little bit breezy. They're coming out of the south southeast at around 21 miles an hour. And we are on the drier side, so you might need some chapstick just for that. But we have had a uh, some roller coaster temperatures as of late. Um, we've kind of been up and down and up and down and right now we're kind of at a lull. We're kind of below average right now, but we should start to see a rise in some of those temperatures. But as for later this week, we could see a potential for some severe weather. Now on Thursday, the SPC right now has it in a marginal risk, so we could see some threats in the Metro and Norman as well. But as we go into Friday, we could start to see that shift eastward and that is when it's going to start impacting Tulsa, Miami, Muskogee and all of those cities out eastward of Oklahoma. Um, and looking at some of these threats that could be associated with this, hail and wind is really what's going to be the primary threat along with this. Tornadoes are low, but again, we can't rule that out along with flooding as well. Um, but looking at your future cash, just timing this out for you, Friday uh, in Friday morning, we should start to see some of those uh, showers enter the area and they could um, have, you know, some flooding associated with that. But like I said before, not too big of a risk. And that, like I said, is going to move eastward. Um, that rainfall amount, we could start to see that more on the eastward side of this state. Um, but like I early Friday, we are going to have some pretty gusty winds. Um, we could be gusting upwards of 50 miles an hour here in Norman. Um, so take into consideration if you're driving on the road for that. Um, right now we are sitting in a fire weather watch for here in Norman in the metro and a fire weather warning up in the panhandle. Now for your lows tonight, we are going to be sitting in the lower 50s, um, so a little bit warmer than we have been for our lows. But for your highs tomorrow, we are going to be in the lower to upper 60s. So we are getting a little bit of relief with some of those warmer temperatures. Um, but taking a look at your seven day, we are going to be 
pretty lovely in terms of temperatures. Thursday, we are gonna have a 20% chance of rain. We could see some of those clouds in the area, but that should be making its way out of the area just in time for that medieval fair. Um, and then Saturday and Sunday are looking beautiful. And Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday are looking lovely as well. I'm back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Lauren. Now today on the South Oval, the Department of Modern Languages, Literatures, and Linguistics hosted the first Language and Culture Day for student Devin Price. There is so much more that it, that you can experience at college besides, oh, I need to take a foreign language credit, I'll just take something easy. You know, it's really a chance to expand your mind and learn more about other cultures and other ways of life. For more information on the department, visit the link at the bottom of your screen. Now, women's gymnastics has a big weekend ahead of them here in Norman. And tonight, OU Nightly Sports is live from the Paycom Center in Oklahoma City to preview the Thunder's crucial game. We're here live at the Paycom Center, where tonight we'll preview the Thunder's match against Detroit. And I'll update you on where the OKC Thunder stand in the Western Conference playoff race and much more right after this. We're here live at the Paycom Center. I'm Kenzie Eiserman, alongside me is Brig Bates. And in a few short hours, the Thunder will be taking on the Pistons at seven. Yeah, Kenzie, the OKC Thunder's season is coming to an end and the race for playoffs is heating up. The OKC Thunder only have six games remaining in the regular season. And this Thunder team is locked in despite recent struggles. Yeah, I mean, I think our team, you know, we do a good job of not, not getting too high, not getting too low. We understand what's at stake, and we understand that we have a game tomorrow. So that's where our focus is, you know, at this moment is getting ready for that, that game tomorrow. So we're not going to weigh our heads on this one for too long. We're going to move on. We're going to learn from it, and we're going to get better. The, pi the Pistons aren't the top team in the NBA, but... This game could mean a lot for the Thunder. That's right, Kinsey. The playoff race has teams sweating it out to make the Western Conference playoffs. And like I said before, the Western Conference standings is action-packed. The, the seven, as you can see, the 7th through 11th standings is right here on the, the full screen. The Thunder currently hold the 10th and final position for the play-in games, and only two games separate all five of these teams and determine if the Thunder slide into playoffs. Every remaining game will have serious playoff implications for the Thunder. In the last match, the Pistons beat the Thunder 112 to 103. Reporting live from the Paycom Center, alongside me, Brig Bates, I'm Kenzie Eiserman. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Kenzie and Brig. Well, back here in Norman, the women's gymnastics team had a big weekend ahead. Tomorrow night, the ladies will compete at the Norman Regionals. Here's what head coach KJ Kindler had to say going into the meets. And you can have tons of talent, but if you don't have that chemistry, if you don't have that, that push, that commitment from your team, um, that belief in the system and in the culture, you can't do big things. And so I feel like this team has that. And when you have that, anything is possible. Tuesday night, the Sooner baseball team was back in Kansas for a midweek matchup with Wichita State. The Sooners started off strong, allowing just two runs in the first six innings, but couldn't hold it down, giving up six in the final two, dropping this one 8-7 to seven for their fifth straight loss. And both men's and women's track and field will be heading to enemy territory to compete in the Texas Relays in Austin starting today through April 1st. And with that, Dakota and Olivia, I'm going to toss the baton back to you at the desk. Thanks, Parker. And we're going to take that baton and run into our next story. That's right. Just hearing about this next story has me exhausted. But this man competed, completed a feat. Many haven't. We'll be right back. Well, Oklahoma has some exciting races like the upcoming OKC Marathon that many will run in, but many of those runners haven't done what this guy has. That's right. Keith Tyndall is racing across the U.S. Tyndall, a Pennsylvania man, set out on his quest of running the 50 marathons and 50 states challenge over a decade ago. He completed his journey recently in Hawaii, state number 52. 
Well, that's all the time we have for today. Thanks for joining us on this sunny Wednesday. I'm Dakota McDowell Wapakichi. And I'm Olivia Daig. Tune in to OU Nightly weekdays at 4.30 and catch us Fridays at 4. Good night.